At 3.47 a.m. on May 11, 1944, Commander Frederick John Walker stood on the bridge of the frigate HMS Starling, observing the North Atlantic through dense fog. His sonar operators had just detected something 800 meters deep, a German U-boat attempting to escape after sinking two Allied merchant ships. It was the third submarine his hunting group had faced that week. The chances of destroying it with conventional depth charges were minimal. To sink a U-boat, the British Royal Navy had to drop an average of 250 depth charges per destroyed submarine. 250. Most escort ships did not carry enough ammunition for that. German commanders knew this. They had studied Allied tactics and knew every limitation of depth charges, openly mocking them in Kriegsmarine reports. But that morning, something different was mounted on the bow of the HMS Starling. It was something German naval engineers considered technically inferior to their own weapons. Something a Kriegsmarine admiral, upon hearing rumors, reportedly called a desperate British toy, a launcher that fired projectiles resembling pool noodles in every direction. Walker gave the order, fire hedgehog. Twenty-four projectiles were launched simultaneously in a perfect arc, falling into the water in a circular pattern forty meters in diameter. For eight seconds, nothing happened. Then, two deafening explosions echoed from the seabed. The U-boat had been hit. Two explosions were all it took. What happened over the next four hours would forever change the Battle of the Atlantic and lead to the destruction of twelve U-boats that never saw the attack coming, because the weapon the Allied hunters used was completely different from anything they had faced before. The design for that weapon began in 1940 to solve a major problem. Conventional depth charges were dropped from the stern of the ship, exploding at preset depths whether they were near the target or not. Each explosion created a curtain of bubbles and turbulence that blinded sonar for up to 15 minutes. During this time, the U-boat could escape, change direction, or dive even deeper. Furthermore, the ship had to pass directly over the submarine to drop the charges, meaning sonar contact was lost at the final critical moments. It was like trying to hit a target while blindfolded. The theoretical solution was simple, create a weapon launched ahead of the ship, maintaining sonar contact until the last second, and only exploding upon direct impact. The problem was that no one knew how to make it work. The initial response from the British Admiralty was one of skepticism. But Commander Charles Gadeev, a Canadian chemist working in the Admiralty's Mine Development Department, would not accept failure. His team worked for 14 months in absolute secrecy, developing a completely revolutionary system. The result was called the Hedgehog. The name came from its appearance, a launcher with 24 mortar barrels arranged in four rows of six, pointing forward at calculated angles. Each projectile weighed 29 kilograms and contained 16 kilograms of torpex, an explosive 50% more powerful than TNT. The shape of the projectiles was cylindrical, with stabilizers that resembled pool noodles. British sailors immediately nicknamed the weapon the Pool Noodle Launcher. But the genius was not in the shape, it was in the contact fuse. Unlike depth charges that exploded automatically, hedgehog projectiles only detonated when hitting something solid, like a submarine's hull. If they missed, they simply sank without exploding, creating no turbulence and leaving the sonar clear. In October 1941, the destroyer HMS Westcott received the first operational hedgehog system. During tests against a decoy submarine, it achieved two direct hits and three attacks. The Admiralty immediately began mass production. However, absolute secrecy was critical. The hedgehog was to be used only in deep Atlantic waters, far from the coast, so that unexploded projectiles would sink thousands of meters deep making them impossible for the Germans to recover. Commander Frederick John Walker received the first 500 hedgehog projectiles in January 1943. Walker was a living legend of anti-submarine warfare, with 11 confirmed U-boat kills using depth charges. But he knew he needed something better for the most dangerous routes in the Atlantic where German wolf packs attacked mercilessly. On February 5, 1943, HMS Starling was escorting convoy HX-224 when sonar detected a submerged contact at 400 meters. Walker ordered a silent approach. At 200 meters, he gave the order, 
Hedgehog, fire. The 24 projectiles arched through the gray Atlantic sky and plunged into the water. 5 seconds. 10 seconds. 15 seconds. Nothing. The projectiles had missed. But the U-boat did not know it was under attack. Accustomed to the chaos of depth charge explosions, the German commander waited for the curtain of water and turbulence that always followed. But the sea remained silent. Starling's sonar continued tracking perfectly. Walker made a slight correction and ordered a second shot. This time, after eight seconds, a massive explosion shook the ocean. Then another. And another. Three direct hits. Debris, oil, and bodies rose to the surface. U-609 had been destroyed with just 48 projectiles, a fraction of the ammunition required with conventional charges. The crew of the Starling was stunned. The official report stated, the value of the hedgehog cannot be emphasized enough. By early 1943, German commanders noticed something had changed. Veterans reported inexplicable experiences of silent attacks followed by devastating explosions directly against the hull. German naval intelligence tried to figure out what was happening, but reports were confusing. A Kriegsmarine document from April 1943 dismissively stated, British prisoners mention a new anti-submarine weapon. Descriptions are vague. Possibly a head-thrown mines. Does not represent a significant threat. Admiral Carl Donitz, commander of the U-boat fleet, reportedly commented sarcastically that if the British had invented a magic weapon, they must have also invented invisible ships. He was being ironic, but by the end of 1943, 47 different British and American shipyards were producing 2,000 hedgehog launchers a month. The hedgehog found its ideal target in the Type 7 U-boats, the backbone of the German fleet. These submarines dove fast and were highly maneuverable, making them hard to hit with depth charges. But the hedgehog didn't need luck, it only needed constant sonar contact and precise aim. At 11.34 a.m. on June 9, 1944, three days after D-Day, Commander Walker received an urgent report, a wolf pack of six U-boats was attacking a vital supply convoy for Normandy. Walker gathered his group, five frigates, all equipped with hedgehogs, and set off at high speed. What followed was one of the greatest anti-submarine hunts in history. For four hours, Walker's ships surrounded the U-boats in a relentless net of sonar and hedgehog fire. The first submarine, U-629, was caught at 300 meters deep. Two hedgehog volleys, for explosions. Sunk. The second, U-441, tried to dive beyond 400 meters, out of range of conventional depth charges. But the hedgehog had no depth limit, its projectiles sank until they hit something solid. Three explosions. Sunk. The third U-boat tried to cut its engines and stay perfectly still on the seabed. Walker was patient. He kept the starling circling slowly. After 40 minutes, the U-boat made a fatal mistake, it turned on its engines to recharge batteries. Instantly, the sonar picked up the sound. Walker ordered a saturation attack, three ships firing simultaneously, 72 projectiles plunging in an overlapping pattern. Six explosions. U-256 literally broke in half. Three sinkings in four hours. Walker wasn't finished. His group located three more U-boats. One by one, they were hunted down and destroyed. U-971, U-333, and U-390 were all sunk with precise hedgehog attacks. Six submarines destroyed in a single operation. It was a massacre. The remaining three U-boats of the Wolf Pack fled in panic, abandoning the mission. Between May 1943 and the end of the war, the Hedgehog fundamentally changed the balance of power. Of the 500 German U-boats lost in the second half of the war, 164 were sunk directly by Hedgehog attacks. During Operation Neptune, the naval support for D-Day, Hedgehog-equipped ships formed an impenetrable barrier around the invasion fleets. On a single day, June 7, 1944, British corvettes using Hedgehog sank nine U-boats attempting to attack the landing ships in Normandy. It was the highest number of submarines destroyed in 24 hours during the entire war. 
Admiral Donuts wrote in his diary, the losses are unsustainable. Something has fundamentally changed. We must find out what it is, or we will lose the entire fleet. But he never did. The Germans captured some unexploded hedgehog projectiles in shallow waters near Norway in 1944, but it was too late to develop countermeasures. General Dwight Eisenhower later wrote that the hedgehog was one of the weapons that made the Allied victory in the Atlantic possible. Commander Frederick John Walker personally sank 24 U-boats during the war, more than any other Allied commander. He died in July 1944 at age 48 from exhaustion and stress. The hedgehog remained classified as secret until 1959. Today, the weapon that once looked like a pool toy is remembered by veterans for the silence followed by explosions that changed the course of history.